what is your beliefs on the paranormal <coughs> at the present time? Excuse me. Everything and anything is possible. And there is an unseen world around us that you have to respect and know how to handle if, if it comes to that. Because some of them aren't so very good. 90% of them, you know, they're living in, in, in like a parallel to us. They don't bother us. Right. Or they're, you know, maybe they turn off your light after you walk out of the room or something. Or, you know, they interact in ways that aren't hateful or harmful. And that's okay. But there's other ones mm. that are out there that are very negative and very intrusive and are, are there specifically to there's cause chaos. There's definitely a, a good and evil. If there's a heaven, I definitely believe there's a hell. And because of the things I experienced, um, it, it really backed that up for me. And right. actually, that, the one good thing that came out of it was it's brought us a lot closer to God. Or the Lord. <laughs> we, I have a lot of faith now, whereas before I, you know, I was questioning. Right. And, and, he, and he grew up Catholic, you know, Catholic high school and everything. And I was born and baptized Catholic, but for one reason or another, I kind of strayed away from, you know, practicing Catholic. Right. I would say we're practicing Christians, you know, we believe there's God. Um, I know I have seen several miracles in what we've been through, whether it be at the house, you know, and getting out as safely as we did, because it could have gone very, very wrong, mm -hmm. um, or in the investigations that we've done, you know, since then, mm -hmm. I've seen things that are, uh, the only explanation is that um, God had a hand in it, mm -hmm. and he's protected us. Why would a spirit hang around on earth? Why? Why? Why wouldn't they go to heaven or hell? What, what is your That's a good question because that's the part I struggled right. with. I couldn't understand, you know, it, growing up the way I did, you were always taught that um, you, know, you died, you either went to heaven or hell. Why, or you didn't go anywhere. Yeah, you were just, you just died. So I, I struggle with that. Why is this, if this is just a spirit, why is it hanging around here, especially a little girl? Right. Um, right. But then the things I started experiencing and seeing. It changed my whole. I, that's when I, the whole demon aspect started, and that I could I could understand that you know we were. Uh, I seriously I think there's demons around, and we just a lot of times can't see them, and, and we don't know we're being influenced by them. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're very yeah, smart. They, they've mean. for ages learned how to trick us and and to trap us into you know. And if they get a hold of you, they they can accentuate the negative aspects that you have in your life, mm -hmm. whether it be anger, anxiousness, or fear, or jealousy, they, they take those negatives and they just, you know, they compound them so much to the point where it, it causes major chaos in your life. And so we're, we've dealt with this for so long that for the most part we can see it coming. Because we're not free of it. I think that we always have an, un, an unseen tether to that negative place and those negative entities that were there and they they creep back in mm -hmm. to our lives once in a while. So a lot of it could be spiritual warfare. That's exactly. what it feels like. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it feels like. And Satan's mm -hmm. the father of lies. Mm -hmm. So of course his demons are going to they don't want to disguise themselves. And right. Take and that, that's what I found out it did in that house because the first time I saw something it was I saw this little girl. And she was standing in the kitchen. I remember coming home from work and getting something out of the fridge. I think it's a glass of juice or something. I turned to look. It was more 18th century type. And it was actually a white dress. And I remember she had a white ribbon in her hair, kind of like she was dressed for church or something. And I'm seeing her, and it didn't kick in right away that it's a ghost. It was just, first thought was, why is this neighbor girl in my house? And, <laughs> And I'm thinking all these thoughts, and then it kicked in. I can see through her. I can see the door right through her. And I, I just froze. It uh, I dropped the glass, and it broke on the floor. And I, <laughs> once again, was brave and ran upstairs and was trying to tell her, but I was, like, hyperventilating. I'm like, oh, my God, I just saw this ghost. All I, all I heard, she kept saying, I saw her. I saw her. I saw, and, and I couldn't make it out until probably the sixth time you said it. And then I just got pissed. <laughs> she didn't show herself to you yet. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 
Mind the paranormal. Miss Boudier. You've been playing with her. I was so frustrated. <laughs> and then you had him, you said, well, while it's fresh in your mind, he actually, draw a picture. I, he went downstairs. He just couldn't. I couldn't get it across to him. Get it out of his system. But I, yeah, and I needed to get it out. And I've drawn my whole life as a little kid. I've drawn pictures. I, I draw portraits and stuff. So I thought I'll draw it down, and then I can show it to her and what I saw. And that's how that picture of Sally came across. And I, I remember her eyes specifically because she was almost looking at me like she was surprised to see me. Like I walked in on her world. She was standing there in the doorway, and she was just like she was. <laughs> it's so hard. Have you to ever explain. watched the, um, the movie The Others? Yes. yes. Oh. It, that, that's it literally what it felt like. like. It felt like we just happened to cross at that same time, and she saw me for the first time, and I saw her. But what was weird is to get back to what I was saying about the demonic aspect and showing itself. I saw that little girl twice, um, and the second time I saw her. It was not a pretty thing. She was tugging at me, trying to get me out of bed. And she kept reaching for me, and I would pull back. And when i pull back, she would reach harder. And about the third or fourth time, she grabbed my arm, and she, I, I still get chills and almost choked up when because it scared me that bad. She turned me into some, this, I don't even know how to describe it. It was part animal, part human. It, it almost looked like it had rotting flesh. Um, I could literally, I still remember seeing worms crawling through it. And it growled at me. <laughs> oh my God. I thought I was going to pass out. And you saw multiple apparitions. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it wasn't just that way. Nope. And after, after I, that little girl changed that, I started seeing this older woman. And I've always referred to her as the uh, storekeeper's wife from Little House on the Prairie. That's what she looked like. <laughs> uh, I remember she was dressed in black and she had lace gloves on. And she, had a kind of a black ruffle collar with a brooch. I still remember a brooch on her. And she would materialize at the end of the bed. I could sit there and watch her. And things would just go, whenever I saw her, things would go high wire. The bed would be moving, the dresser drawers would be boom, boom, slamming. Um, and I would just be paralyzed. And I remember coming over to the side of the bed, and the two times I saw her like that, she would, it was like, in a replay, she would reach out towards me, and when she'd reach, I'd see her arm, and she would say, I'm gonna, and by the time she got to my throat, I would see a blackbird on her hand, and then she'd disappear, and that happened twice. Well, she's anything like the lady on Little House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not a good thing. No. no. I wonder what the significance is about that bird, because that, that sticks out. Yeah, we were trying it to was, research that. I never understood mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah. That's Interesting and enough, I don't know if you know anything about the um, the Villisca Axe Murder House. Have you been up there? I haven't been up there, but I know, I know a lot about okay. it. <laughs> the woman who lived next door uh -huh. looks like that. that the, the woman at the Villisca House um, yeah. that actually found the children. I was flipping, we had gone there and I was flipping through a book we bought about it, and I come across this picture of the neighbor lady that found the, the family the next door. And I, I kid you not, she looks identical to the woman I saw in the bedroom. Oh my goodness. It, it just kind of, I kind of froze when I saw that. I was like, oh my God. And there's actually a couple parallels that little The addresses girls, are the same. Yeah. They're both 508 2nd Street. They're both supposed to have been built on Indian. Um, Indian so Badlands or something. Yeah, where they would put their, where the Indians would keep their would mentally be, insane. And they would traverse around it to avoid any bad stuff. My goodness. You guys had more than just uh, stuffed animals and bears catching fire. You had candles. Candles, candles bankies, toys, um, a rose, a fresh rose, oil a lamp. bib, oil lamps. What did your friends and family think um, coming to your house and having these things? I don't did think they always anybody catch wanted on to come to, to the house after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At Christmas, I, I had a, a family member that when they were leaving, come around the stairs. And Thank God it was towards the end of leaving, everybody yeah. was like leaving and then with the majority. And they come running back and said, your stairs are on fire. Or, oh my it was, a, it was a, um, a mop. You've never seen those like country mop dolls. Mm -hmm. 
little bonnets and everything. Oh yeah. That had been that was on fire. And he grabbed it and ran upstairs with it and you know, in the water. He came out with burns and things were usually and they burned with it. And it, if a doll burned it seemed to always burn. Well it was underneath her the brim of her head, underneath her hair, hmm. to the neck. And what was it? I've got the dolls still. I think it was like the yeah, it would have like a itself. ring. It would burn a ring. But it's a straw head, and, and it, it should have all gone. Yeah. yeah, but it didn't. It was very localized. Yes, it was like like I said, it would go from the inside out. That's what was so weird. You couldn't explain how it was. You the couldn't. You couldn't have held a match or anything to it and burn it like the way it was burned. So. Yeah, I do question your sanity. Uh, a lot. And we did a lot. You were. I found myself often either one end or the other end of a teeter totter. Where's your thinking? Okay, I've ruled out everything, it's got to be paranormal. And then you're at the other end thinking, you know, this can't be, I'm missing something, you know, you, there, there's got to be something logical about this, what am I, what am, what am I not seeing, you know, bring something else in, or, you know, right. so you constantly found yourself at, at different right.